afternoon, this is Sarah Berman and you are watching Practically Writing. Today we are going to be talking about the worst topic ever, getting rejected. I do have some announcements, so stay tuned to the end of the video to get those and let's get started. Rejection. Nobody likes it. Nobody wants it. And yet, it happens to everyone. Now, this topic came about because of, well, I got rejected. Essentially, one of the short stories that I wrote for the anthologies that I was so confident I was going to get into, it was just a little too similar to another story, and, well, quite frankly, it wasn't my best work ever. I mean, universally it's been referred to as good, but not excellent. It was turned down. Um, a lot of the reasons for that were completely legitimate. Similar stories were already submitted. The work wasn't quite as good as some of the other pieces that were submitted. It wasn't my best work. Um, there were a lot of submissions, so there were also a lot of rejections, you know, so these are all completely legit. So I'm going to talk about kind of the process that goes into being rejected, at least for me. Now, I cannot reiterate this enough. Everyone gets rejected. I have actually a really low rejection rate for a lot of reasons and I actually I don't submit a lot I um, I get invited to submit more than I could submit so um, people know what they're expecting from me and they know kind of what they're getting from me so it's not like a big surprise if I write what I write because it's what I write. I, I tend to be very particular about what I submit to. Now it's like if I'm not a good fit for your market then I'm not submitting to your market so there you go. And of course there's always the, the fact that I did not take the author path of writing for the paying market that is magazines, websites, e-zines, that kind of thing. So I don't write a lot of short stories specifically to make a buck off them. I tend to write short stories to have them put in anthologies, which is more of a marketing practice than a payment practice. It's subtle differences. So I don't do a lot of that. Um, I only put out you know, maybe four or five short stories a year, which really is not that, that much. That is why I don't get a lot of rejections, but it does happen. The big thing is, no matter how professional you are, no matter how legitimate the reasoning is for rejection, your first reaction is going to be an emotional one. And mostly it's along the sadness anger spectrum. I'm just being real here. You know, it doesn't matter who it is, it doesn't matter why they're rejecting you, they're rejecting you, and there is that gut reaction to that. So when I get a rejection, I just kind of skim through it enough to know that it's a rejection and kind of why, and then I set it aside. And I do not look at it again for at least 24 hours because I need time to just be sad or be mad or be frustrated or, you know, whatever else that I need to be about that, I give myself that time. And that helps me to be able to go back and look at it after that time period and actually get something from what's being said. That's the thing. A good rejection will tell you something that needs to be said. It's always good to get as much objectivity when you're doing that 
but you also can't just pretend that it's not gonna, you know, kick you in the gut. It happens. It's just, that's the way it is. Once I have achieved a sort of objective place in my mind, then I look at the reasons for the rejection. They're usually completely legitimate, and it doesn't even matter if I agree with them, because, you know, I, I don't know what all of the other submissions are. I don't know exactly what they were looking for. I don't know so many things that are a matter of their perspective. I just have to look at what they're saying and decide Okay, so if it's not quite what they're looking for, maybe that's just not a market that I write for. I can either change the way I write or I can find another market. Those are both completely legitimate choices. If it's that there were other stories that were better, well, okay. You know, I've never declared myself to be the greatest author of all time. Although, I'm not turning down the title if anybody gives it to me. Just saying. Surely there are other stories that are, you know, better. And, you know, even that is not really as objective as it sounds. I mean, people like stories for different reasons. Some of the greatest stories of all time have their detractors. Nobody likes everything. Or, you know what? Not everything is loved by everyone. Yeah. Now sometimes that little bit of information is going to be all you get. It's just going to be, hey, this is what we got out of your story and it's just not what we're looking for or we went in another direction or something like that. Sometimes that's all you get and you, you know, you smile, you nod and you move on. Um, if you're lucky, the person who is doing the rejecting will actually give you feedback on it. It's more or less like beta reading, in my opinion. The feedback is a perspective. It is an individual's perspective, and about 75% of the time, it's helpful. And the other 25% of the time, it's like, well, you should do this with it. Well, yeah, but I'm not going to. <laughs> or, you know... But, you know, th th those are your choices to make as the author for your story. But you should read what the feedback is because whether or not you agree with it, that is what one of your readers is saying about it. And this is something that I have been trying to explain for some time in another group. If I'm beta reading for you, I will not read your replies to my comments. And the reason for this is if somebody buys your book, this is, you know, the comments that I make are essentially what people, or what I rather, would be thinking in my head while reading this book after purchasing it and reading through it. Are you going to call me up? Are you going to call up any of your readers or email them or even know who they are so that you can have a discussion with them about why their perception of your story is wrong? No, that's not how that works. You need to decide if that perception is a one-off. It happens. If it's a problem with clarity within your story, fix it. Or if it's just that person's too stupid to live. Uh, probably not the best judgment to make, but okay. You just, you need to understand that this is what people are seeing with your story. You don't have to agree with it because you don't get to have a conversation with all of your readers. You need to decide if that is something that you need to address in your writing or not period. End of story. Because you cannot have a back and forth with somebody about how they're reading your story. But you can't ask them to change their opinion on what you're writing. 
because you can't do that to your readers. Not because it's unethical or it's just a schmucky thing to do, although it is both. It's because you don't know who all of your readers are. You will never be able to track all of them down. You know, even if you have like three readers, you probably only know two of them. Hopefully you have more than three readers. You don't get to have a conversation where you explain your writing to your readers. If that's what your writing requires, write better. I got the rejection. I whined about it a lot to my husband. Um, I may have cried a little bit. I was sad. It's winter. I cry all the time. Come on. And then I read the feedback, decided if I was going to use any of it, talked to a few other people. Now, going forward, I have to decide what I'm going to do with the short story. Now, there are three major options. First, throw it in the trash. You know what? I thought it was good enough to submit in the first place, so the trash is probably not where it needs to go. Second, you know, so you can do some rewrites and resubmit it, or you cannot do some rewrites and resubmit it. Not necessarily to the same place, but, you know, continue the submission process with that story. So that's two. Continue the submission process. That is completely legitimate. If you thought it was a good enough story to submit in the first place, then it's probably good enough for somewhere. Whether it was good enough for that specific location at that specific time, you know, that, that does not mean that the story is bad. It does not mean that you as a writer is bad, are bad. <laughs> that it does it is not a characterization of your entire writing career to get a rejection although it can feel like that but it isn't and number three you can take the short story either revamp it or not you know based on the feedback and do other with it and other is essentially you can put it up as a freebie if you need a reader magnet for newsletters you can put it out and just have it be the little draw that gets people into your newsletter or your website or whatever that works you can publish it as a short story which can be a little hairy there is a minimum page limit for paperbacks, not for ebooks. So, you know, you can publish it as like a, a short for ebooks and either have it as a and either have it as a perma free or like a ninety nine cent short, depending. You can stash it in a folder with a whole bunch of other short stories that you have no place for and eventually do a, you know, personal anthology or a short story collection that you publish yourself. All of those are completely legitimate choices. You know, it kind of depends on what you want to do moving forward. And a lot of that will depend on what kind of story it is. If you're writing for a specific anthology with a specific theme, it might be a little harder to re, you know, turn around and resubmit that same short story to other places. Not impossible, but harder. It just kind of depends on what your strategy is. Uh, I've been doing really well with putting out the 99 cent shorts and occasionally having them as freebies. Now, there are a couple of things that I feel the need to mention because sometimes people do them. And these are the reactions to rejections that will get you literally nowhere. As a writer, as a business person, they will shoot you in the foot. Just do not do them. It does not matter how you feel. It doesn't matter if you think that you've been treated unfairly 
or anything like that. It literally does not matter. Never, ever, ever do these things. Do not badmouth an editor simply for rejecting your material. In very rare exceptions, times when you might want to call out an editor for being unprofessional in their response. But that is a whole nother topic. Never call out an editor for rejecting your story. Never contact an editor and protest their decision. You are not going to make friends. You are not going to convince them. In fact, if they had even thought for a second that they might reconsider your story, that is a number one way to make sure that that does not happen. Because you're going to piss people off. Nobody wants somebody telling them you were wrong in the judgment that you made. Just don't do it. Never do it. Okay? It's not something that needs to be aired on social media. You want to maintain a professional presence, a professional attitude. That does not mean you don't get to have the feels. It means that you don't get to act on the feels. If that makes sense. You can have the feels, you cannot act on the feels. Got it? Good. Bottom line, what does this all mean? Well, I was going to use this as one of my 13 and 24 publications, so I have a spot that opened up. I can either publish the short story as a 99 cent short and still count it, or I can have another story or novel that I throw in towards the end since I do have a lot of open space at that point it's entirely possible that that could happen so um, I'm not sure I'm not sure what it means um, mostly it's just that this short story is not getting published and now I need to figure out what to do with it and that's that I mean there's not really much else to say about it you know, I've been, I've been writing and submitting short stories for over a decade now. I mean, if you're going to count, oh, if you're going to count all the things, you know, I started in high school. There's always another thing around the corner. There's always another publication. There's always another short story. And that's fine so it's just a matter of deciding what to do and that's that okay announcements I have revealed the cover for book three of the rune spell series the chains that bind I'm so excited I will be posting the pre-order link pre-order if you are a patron on my Patreon, or if you follow my newsletter, then you will be getting notifications sooner, 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 because there are bonuses to loving me, love me, love me, love me. So all of that is in anticipation of the release. Which is the end of February. So I have some editing work to, to be getting done. I'm also working on Her Beloved Disaster and Blood of the Moon since I bombed so hardcore on NaNoWriMo. But that's okay. My husband took the blame. And it is his fault. So, Speaking of platforms, you can ask questions in the comments section below. You can also tell me your worst or best rejection story. There are good ones out there, by the way. Don't forget to ring the bell. Don't forget to click subscribe. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up because this video is awesome. You can get the first two books of the Rune Spells series, Too Weird and Fluffy Bunny, on Amazon before The Chains That Bind comes out. That way you can get caught up on the series before you read the third one. Oh my god. You can also find the rest of my books on Amazon. 
You can follow me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. And I am also on Instagram. Look for the author goddess. Look for Sarah Berman. That's what I'm always under. So there you go. All links are down below. Don't forget to follow me on Patreon. I am moving all of my blogs to Patreon. If you follow me on Patreon, you will still get my blog posts. If you sponsor me on Patreon, it can be for as little as a dollar a month, then you will actually get my blog posts earlier, as well as certain notifications, either earlier or sometimes my patrons are the only ones who get to know things. There is actually a level where you get every single publication that I put out for free, available to you as my patron. Not even kidding. Good time. And we'll see you next time. Take a look at this sweet cover. <laughs> that was a little... Ooh. I tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't really matter. I had to fall to lose it all, and in the end, it doesn't really matter. I can have feels in the short stories. I can put feels in the short stories. I can have feels about the short stories. Short stories and feels I can have. Cheeseburger. Love me. Love me, love me. Say that you love me. <laughs>